This is the demonstration part of this week's lesson. I'm going to use our old familiar um, data sets, the MCD of Oneida County, Minor Civil Divisions, Cities, Towns, and Villages, and the Ag Districts of, Monroe, of Oneida County, which are uh, the ones shown in pink here. Um, I think for a first shot at this, I'm going to um, show you a simple geoprocessing operation, which is uh, part of something part of a group called proximity and in the uh, our catalog um, many of the geoprocessing tools are under analysis and in this case I would have to know by experience that the buffer command which I'm about to do is within the subgroup called proximity and uh, there's a tool called buffering which will uh, create a new shapefile which um, shows the area that would be covered by the ag districts if they were to expand in all directions by a certain distance. And this is very visual, so we'll just try that. I want to point out at this, at this time that I, I know where the buffer tool is um, but by experience. If I didn't, it's possible to go to geoprocessing and ask for the search by search for tools and if I have some idea of what the tool is called but I can't seem to find it I can type in the uh, buffer in the search box and it'll give me some choices and what I want is not a a group I want a specific tool um, and we'll do a simple buffer analysis and clicking on that will open up my dialog box and in this case I, I have a set of directions here which are very nice I have a tool button or a help button which will open up a much more extensive um, bunch of help about this particular tool to explain all of these uh, particular features. We're going to do a very simple case right now though which won't need any help with in which we ask uh, we say that the input features what we start with is the ag districts. The output features are going to uh, for this purpose of this demonstration are just going to get stored in uh, some location which uh, in some storage location which I'm not specifying um, and they'll disappear later on um, I'm going to specify here that I would like to create a buffer of 200 meters um, around each of the ag districts so the new shapefile will have all the ag districts plus a 200 meter halo so to speak around all of the ag districts and uh, I'm going to actually ask for dissolve um, and that's to prevent um, all of the overlapping polygons from muddling the new shapefile creating extra lines and extra fragments and slivers and everything else so I'm going to dissolve all the uh, all the boundaries that are artif artificial boundaries that are created and after doing that I can go ahead and say okay and uh, buffering will take a minute or two to do and uh, and especially the dissolve portion of buffer will be a little bit slow. Um, I guess it wasn't. It was pretty. It was pretty prompt, and I got the nice green check mark. And I can see um, now what I'm left with, or what I, what I now have is, and uh, I can put this up on top. I can see the 200 meter buffer around each of the ag districts. It'll be more visible if I zoom in and I can see that I've created buffering around each of the ag districts and uh, that's a, it's a very convenient um, convenient tool to use it's, and it's widely used. Um, I'd also like to show you a function called the near function which is one that I explained before um, probably didn't really sink in very well because it's relatively complicated. What I'd like to do is use the near function in this particular example to identify the town that is closest to each and every one of these ag districts. That's information I don't have. Um, I could go through and use the identify tool and say that that's the town of Lee and then I could somehow or another assign a new field that says town of Lee to each and every one of these ag districts, but that would be a very time-consuming, um, time-consuming thing. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to assign um, 
to each of these ag districts, however thousands of them that there are, the um, the ID number, as we'll discover, the ID number of the town that that ag district is closest to. And that's pretty simple. It's the same as the ag district that's uh, that that is or the town that is enclosing that ag district the actual distance from this ag district to the nearest town is zero and the nearest town is the town of lee which has uh, an, an idea of of a or a feature id of 11 more about that later um, but we'll uh, by by using the near function we'll be able to assign and th there are other ways to do this and there are ways that might actually be better but this is a very handy one um, to demonstrate today's topic. Um, why would I want to do that? Well, actually, the, the fact is that in my attribute table, I don't have a unique town assigned to each of these agricultural districts. I only have a cluster of towns, a cluster of towns making up what's called um, an ag district code or an ag district cluster so this particular ag district right there I don't actually know which of these four towns it's actually in so what I'd like to do is to is to go ahead and create that information using the near function you can find that in the geoprocessing um, search for tools toolbox search for something called near and it's a, an analysis tool and I say okay um, and now to do this near, um, the input features are going to be the ag districts themselves. Those are the ones that are going to get for them figured out what the nearest um, town is. Um, the near features, the things that could be that could be or will be near, are towns. And um, I'm going to let this go ahead and save it. Oh, it's actually going to um, make an enhancement to this attribute table which we'll see shortly. And there's various modifiers that we won't bother to use in this case. And let the near function do its computation down here. Um, I hope it moves a little bit faster as it gets going. Ah, it's picking up speed and uh, it'll shortly be done and we'll see what um, improvement it makes to our attribute table of the agricultural districts. And there's my uh, my green and as I move over, um, what it tells me is that um, all the near distances obviously are going to be zero because every ag district is in some town, so it has a zero distance to some town. Um, it's going to tell me um, the particular the FID of the nearest town. So um, in order to sort this out, um, we'll need to say for this particular ag district it is inside of or it's nearest to the uh, town which is numbered 24 and in order to figure that out I'll have to go to the attribute table here and discover that's the town of Vernon now there is at least two ways to get the actual name of the town into the attribute table um, instead of its code, but we're going to save that for uh, the grand finale on geoprocessing next week. What I'd like to also show you in this video is a demonstration of the exercise that you're going to do today. Um, and what you're going to find out is um, you're going to do an analysis um, and find out what, which of the houses in the town of Parma, and we've left out the village, of Hilton, um, which is a separate political entity, but it's inside the town of Parma. And we're going to find out how many houses are in flood zones. And what we're looking at right now is um, blue is flood zones, and that data set's available to you, as are the house um, footprints file, which is called Parma Houses. This will be a little more evident when we zoom in on it. We'll zoom in on a place where there seems to be some activity. And uh, here's all of the um, houses um, in one particular part of Parma. And it does appear that some of them are actually within the uh, flood zone here. And most of them are not. 
So why don't we go ahead and use the near function to do this analysis. Again, I'll go to search for tools, ask for near, and do a near analysis on these particular data sets. Um, the input features in this case are the Parma houses, and we would like for every house footprint in all of Parma, of which there's about 4,000, we would like to find the nearest flood zone. And we can just go ahead and do that computation. And uh, this one may take a moment or two to get started and to do its computation. Um, we will wait it out. And what we'll have is a modified attribute table, an improved attribute table for the Parma Houses shapefile that includes in it the distance from that house, each and every house, to the nearest flood zone. If that distance is zero, that means that the house either touches or I guess an, it, it touches or is inside of a flood zone, um, a FEMA-defined flo FEMA flood hazard zone. Um, if the number is greater than zero, it means the house is outside of the flood zone. Um, if the number is very much larger than zero, it means the house is very far away from any flood zone. So by doing this simple analysis, um, dragging along at the bottom of the screen, we'll be able to sort out which of the houses are in the flood zone, which are relatively close, and which are not close at all. As soon as this is done, we'll take a look at the attribute table. Um, the question I'm gonna ask you to turn in as your assignment for this week is a relatively tricky one to understand. It'll take a little thought. I would like you to find the house that is ranks 200th in how close it is to a flood zone. So we're going to find the 200th closest house to a flood zone, taking a wild guess that there's 40 houses in flood zones in Parma, and the 41st house will have a very, very small distance to a flood zone, and then moving downward through the list, we'll eventually discover the uh, 200th furthest, the house that's 200th furthest from the flood zone, and that's the answer that you'll report to me so that I can make sure that you've... Uh, figured out how to use this tool correctly. So if it'll finish, which I'm hoping it will any second now, we'll be able to look at the attribute table and, uh, and see what the, what the distances are. And here's the near distances. And there's some that are zero, some that are a lot that are zero um, in a whole cluster. Um, one whole group of them seem to be approximate, seem to be touching a flood, flood zone in that particular neighborhood and uh, onward we go for uh, various other distances. You may recall that we can go ahead and do a uh, sort operation by clicking here and saying sort ascending and I was hoping that there would be a counter somewhere so anyways, you will need to count down 200, and if you get it a little bit wrong, I'll understand that your counting was wrong. If we wanted to go down 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 40, 30, 30, 34, approximately, oh, there's quite a few that are zeros. We'll have to count down um, 200 on this list to find the actual um, distance. Ah, here's a way to do it. Good thing I was here to, to help. We can travel down the list and discover that we've now selected 270 and still got a near distance of zero. So I'm going to revise the assignment. I'm going to have to go back in and change it and I'm going to have to make it, um, make it a larger number or else your answer will be zero. So let's, uh, let's go down to 248. And now we can just count down um, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 58, 60, 62, and even more. 
So we'll have to go somewhere past um, 270 to actually find one that has a value. So I'm going to say um, look for the 400th largest value. Um, I guess it'll help, it'll help you practice your uh, mouse skills to uh, travel down to 400. That's 454. So by using that, I'll be able to, uh, so for the 454th most distant house from a flood zone in Parma is 28.5 meters. And what I'm going to ask you to find is uh, the 450th in order to get that correct, you'll have to be able to do this operation in order to report the exact number back to me.